um, and uh, it one of the uh, most uh, it, it 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 will give you the highest return of investment if you uh, decide to invest uh, in early childhood because the benefit um, uh, will be uh, <clears throat> longer in the uh, into the future uh, and uh, the the uh, so it is uh, also well established in the literature that uh, the quality of center-based education uh, will play an important role on young children's um, outcomes, cognitive, social outcomes, and readiness, uh, readiness to school, and blah blah blah. Uh, they, uh, it, uh, there uh, have been a lot of uh, literature on this, uh, but uh, in uh, this paper, the, uh, I I try to ask different question. It's about the spillover effects. Is whether um, the uh, center that is a high quality center in the community, uh, the benefit of the center is uh, uh, affected the whole community, uh, the, the, the whole children in the village uh, who do not attend that center. So whether the practice and knowledge in those highly uh, higher quality centers spread to other centers nearby and whether um, investment uh, in that high quality center uh, affect uh, other children who do not enroll in um, this high quality center. So this, uh, I think this is an uh, important question because uh, if we can understand uh, the spillover effects, then um, it's, um, uh, it's cost effective. It's, it, that, that, that it is more cost effective to decide where to put the money, uh, uh, how to invest on early childhood development, because it's it means that if we can understand this, it maybe it means that uh, we don't need to uh, invest and on, uh, on all of the uh, ECED centers or the PAUD uh, 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 centers uh, that, that are available. We, we just pick a couple of centers, and because of spillover, all of other centers and all of other children can benefit from the investment. Uh, and this is the st uh, study uh, objective. So uh, if this is uh, a village and this is the high quality center, and I, I want to address the question whether this high quality center, if, if, if we invest uh, uh, to this center and uh, whether the effect of investment that makes this center is high quality uh, will influence other center uh, in the village, other center in the, in the village, which is uh, of a lower quality, okay, and other children in the village who uh, never enrolled uh, at any ECD center at all. So uh, this is the main question of, um, of my research. Okay. And um, <clears throat> I use, uh, in fact, evolution study. This is, um, I think this is a famous study because uh, a dozen of paper, um, as far as I know, already uh, written based on this data. Uh, uh, impact evolution study consists of uh, about uh, 7,000 children in 310 villages in Indonesia over the period 2009 and 2013. And uh, I know that uh, a new wave uh, already coming out, uh, the fourth wave, but uh, in this study, I use the first three waves. Okay, and uh, 217 villages receive a package of intervention um, uh, that consists of three elements, community facilitation. So uh, it means that uh, the uh, villagers, uh, the, 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 the donor try to make the villagers aware that the, uh, their village uh, get the grant. And then um, the villagers can discuss between themselves uh, how to use that grant, okay? And uh, how, how, how to spend that grant. Um, well, it turns out that the majority of village agree to use the grant to establish new centers okay of at most two centers per village and including teacher training in these new centers um and uh, the the treatment villages uh, is not chosen uh, at random 
it's uh, selected based on a couple of criteria such as poverty rate, uh, sufficiently right population of children aged uh, zero till six years old and uh, village commitment uh, to contribute uh, to the project. And so uh, uh, we know that um, the majority of village uh, of the village uh, received the intervention and uh, a small amount of village uh, act as uh, controlled villages. And uh, I can uh, measure spillovers because uh, not affected by uh, ECD investment. So uh, everything uh, go as usual in, the, uh, in those villages, uh, in controlled villages. And the data uh, contains, uh, so this is, uh, the data has a panel structure um, and uh, also uh, has a baseline. And uh, the sample of the children consists of two different cohorts, one and four year old cohort at baseline. And uh, in order to increase the number of, observa uh, of, of observation, I pull the children across cohorts. Okay, I, 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 uh, this is the main idea of the methodology um, of the paper. Um, so uh, we have here treated village and control village. And the goal is to measure spillover effect. And uh, in treated village, um, uh, there are uh, uh, children who are enrolled uh, in ECD center and those who never enrolled in ECD centers uh, because they go straight to the primary school. Uh, the same thing happens at control village. Uh, and uh, those children who choose to enroll at ECED center, they can choose whether to enroll at a, a project finance ECED center or regular ECED center. Um, yeah, and um, I want to compare the spillover uh, effect. I want to uh, compare the outcome of uh, the children attending this center uh, in treated village with the outcome, uh, the outcome of children attending these centers in a control village. So this is the spillover effect for the, the line. Number three is the spillover effect of ECD investments on children enrolled at regular ECD centers. And uh, I also want to measure the spillover effects on never enrolled children, right? In these uh, two groups of village, treated and controlled village. Uh, line number four. So I, I focus on measuring line number three and line number four. And line number four is the spillover effect of ECD investments on children never attending ECD centers. So how, how, how to measure that? The identification um, uh, is that I need to address selection at two different levels. The first level is an um, individual selection. It means that um, uh, individual that choose to enroll to ECED center is not uh, have have certain characteristics that makes them different to those individual who uh, decide not to enroll to ECED center. Okay, so I need to address the individual selection first, and the second I need to address the village selection. Okay, so. Um, the empirical strategy is, uh, uh, it's like, yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's defined that way to address two different kind of selections. Uh, so uh, we, uh, I have two stage, two, two stage uh, empirical strategy. The first, like I said before, I want to uh, address selection at the individual level. So, um, at the individual level means that whether they enroll or never enroll. So this is a classic matching methods. Um, matching methods, we can use the propensity score matching, nearest neighborhood matching. But in this case, because I have two stage and I need to bootstrap at the end to get the correct standard error, then I um, uh, the method that I uh, choose for matching is entropy balancing. So basically, it's just uh, balance the, co the covariates of children uh, enrolling at ECD center and those who, uh, who 
try to not to enroll to ECDC, just to balance the covariates. Balance the covariates in terms of the mean uh, interactions, uh, uh, variance, uh, second order interaction, blah, blah, blah. And then uh, I conduct um, the outcome regression at the individual level. Yeah. Okay. So I, I conduct the outcome regression at the individual level. Uh, so it's maybe something like this. Uh, I just uh, outcome regression at the individual level. Then I aggregate this outcome. Okay. I aggregate this outcome for each enroll and never enrolled uh, 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 group of children to the village level. I aggregate the outcome to the village level. And then uh, I move to the second stage. Uh, in the second stage, I address the uh, uh, the uh, village select selection into treatment. Okay, so um, the same thing, but now I do the analysis at the village level. So this is the village level. And this is the individual level. Uh, the, the village level. So I, I have treated village and I have control village the same thing as before. I do matching methods to balance the cover the, the covariates and then I, I get the weight and then I conduct the outcome uh, regression, the, the weighted uh, re regression. Okay, because uh, from, from this matching um, method, I get the weights, right? And uh, th these weights um, can be used uh, to the uh, outcome. Uh, regression and and this is no sorry this is at the village level so this is should be uh, y bar uh, j um, x j is something like this uh, so this is basically the idea uh, I, I I will uh, just skip uh, when uh, the analysis becomes uh, too technical. And uh, the definition of treatment, this is the definition. Um, uh, ever enrolled children, all those children who ever participated in regular center between 2009 and 2013. And um, because there are many ECD types in Indonesia, the, the effect identified will be the average effect uh, across types. Uh, as we know, we, we have um, a, a, a couple of variety of uh, ECD centers, for example, under the uh, auspices of Ministry of uh, Education, Ministry of uh, Religious Affairs, okay, and post power and blah, blah, blah. And um, I, I do not differentiate the effect across those different types. So this is interpreted as the average effect of uh, enrollment across types. And I dropped the sample of children attending project supported centers because the comparison is made between children attending regular centers in treatment versus control village. And as a result, the, the number of observations dropped into around 4,000. And the second definition is village level treatment, okay, whether the village received the CED grant. Um, the descriptive statistic, uh, I do not present table uh, because uh, it's um, a, a lot of covariates. So this is the summary um, of the descriptive statistics. Uh, as we can predict, children who ever enrolled at the ECD center, they have better background and better outcomes. They have better background and better outcomes. And when we compare treated and controlled village, uh, those village, um, the characteristics uh, are not statistically different between each other, except in two dimensions, poverty and availability of educational facilities. Like, well, we can predict this because uh, the selection criteria into receiving uh, the block grant uh, is this. Uh, 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 if this poverty availability of educational facilities, the number of children um, under six years old, and blah blah blah. And this is the empirical methodology, uh, the, the the theory. Um, well, I use the potential outcome framework. Um, yeah, uh, what makes my approach different is because uh, this y is a function of two. Uh, things to 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 treatment for Brita, I'm sorry. Uh, yes. Five more minutes, Brita. Okay, I will jump into the results. 
Okay, I, I will jump into the results. Uh, this is the results. Uh, okay, uh, it improved uh, school readiness in physical well-being for never enrolled children, but not those children attending regular centers. Yeah. Mm, what is uh, the physical well-being? Physical well-being is uh, the ability of children to use toilet independently, uh, the motor like ability to manipulate a pen, um, something like that. Uh, it, it turns out that I find still over effect and, uh, and this is the, the effect on never enrolled children, but not those children attending regular centers, but uh, on uh, other domains like communication and general knowledge, uh, I, I, I find significant spillover effects for children attending regular centers and those children who never attend ECD program. Okay, and this is the magnitude of effects. It's less than one standard deviation, but it's still modest. And this is the channel of operation of spillover effect. Uh, I, uh, the, the analysis suggests that the interaction between centers uh, play, a, play a little role uh, but uh, spillover effects uh, in my study uh, could be driven by mainly driven by social interactions rather than interaction between centers. I think this is uh, okay. I, I want to emphasize the last thing. Uh, I I can measure also the overall effect. Okay, when uh, I compute the ratio of spillover effects to total effect, uh, the, the effect is is large. Okay, so the, the total effects is the effect of enrollment to ECD center and the uh, village treatment is the total effect of uh, both um, individual and village level treatment and uh, spillover effect, the, 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 the spillover effect, uh, the ratio of spillover effect to total effects is about 50% uh, which is relative large. So, um, well, large portion of the total impact is due to the spillover effect. Okay, uh, this is the conclusion and this is the robustness test that basically I use to check whether um, I already control the most important covariates. I think that's all, uh, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Prita. You actually still have two more minutes. <laughs> Uh, if yeah. I think uh, uh, this is a very interesting um, topic, Prita, yeah? uh, very timely, and uh, this is quite resemble with uh, one study that I've read about, uh, uh, from World Bank, where the presence of a public uh, PAUD uh, has a in, is associated with increasing female force participation by uh, some some points. So I think uh, this is uh, quite resemble with um, other studies. Now uh, I open the um, uh, questions and answer. Please, if you have uh, questions, I will give an opportunity to uh, one or two uh, participants to ask their questions directly. So if you have uh, questions, please raise your hand. Or you can also write down your questions in uh, the chat. Okay, I see Mas Esa uh, raising his hand. Please, Mas Esa. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Bu Prita. This is a very interesting study. Um, so uh, my, I have uh, several questions. Uh, should I uh, deliver it one by one or, or just? Uh, I, I think one uh, one first, but as so okay. we can give other so, uh, opportunity. Okay. The, the the first thing is uh, I'm curious about what is the name of the program? May I know that the ECED investment program? Mm. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, sorry, I don't know exactly the name of the program. Oh, okay. Or is it some kind of um, uh, foreign? funded um, program or yes it's uh, foreign funded i think it's a um, cooperation uh, it, it's, it's a soft grant um, from yeah. australia or the I netherlands see. 
but uh, the data is uh, publicly available. Um, uh, you yeah. can submit uh, the request to the World Bank, and then um, they will give you the the data. Okay, interesting. Uh, probably uh, I can utilize uh, the data set better. And the second is about the the assignment of the um, program to the village. Is there any kind of randomization or uh, the assignment is just uh, based solely on the uh, what you've mentioned before, the poverty rate, etc.? Is it some kind of um, randomization of the assignment of the, the program to the village? Yes. Um, the randomization is hap uh, uh, happened at uh, uh, between uh, three village. So that's mm -hmm. uh, what is it? Uh, multi stage randomization. Uh, like for the first stage, uh, 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 village uh, were randomized uh, who will get the grant at the first stage. And then a couple months later, uh, it will be randomized again who will get the grant on the second stage. And then it's randomized again who will get the grant at the third stage. So uh, because of the randomization, um, we can study the overall impact, the the the, the, the causal impact of the ECD investment. But uh, unfortunately, uh, it's not. It's just a short-term impact because at the end, all the village uh, get the grant at the end. So right. it's just maybe the effect is less than two years. Um, short-term effect of the ECD investment and uh, the, the results, uh, the, 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 uh, the, 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 the results of the study is that um, it's significant, particularly for a uh, lower income group. I see. All and right. Uh, uh, is that your, uh, sorry, Pansesa, is that your third question? Because I have uh, Alberto's question uh, okay. here. Maybe if you can hold it. Sorry, yeah. Uh, all right, so I will read a question from Albertus Gilik Alo from Unipa. Uh, good presentation, Bu Prita. So, how to control the issue of transfer knowledge between those who participate and those who do not participate in the program because they will play together? Thank you. Rakan Prita. I, I don't I don't control for that. Uh, uh, thank you for the questions, but uh, yeah, uh, in, in in my study, that's uh, exactly the one that I want to measure um, the exchange of knowledge between participants. Right? Is that the questions? I think so. So uh, yeah, I think how. Because they play together, kids are playing together. So how do you control the transfer of knowledge? Or is that the transfer of knowledge that you're actually examining, right? Yeah, 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 that's correct. Um, the children play together, the parents uh, gather together um, in the village activities. Um, yeah. OK, so that's one of the channel, yeah? So that's transfer knowledge is one of the channel. All right, uh, is there any other question for Prita? Uh, there is no more question in the chat uh, because Mas Esa, I think you have one last burning question. Would you like to uh, address it to okay. Rita? So okay, thank you. Thanks, yeah. So <laughs> my next question is about so uh, for the control uh, villages, um, are they next to the treatment villages or? they are from different uh, distant villages because I think um, the distance uh, between the control and the treatment villages uh, should also be uh, controlled for and or probably uh, have you control for that the distance between um, the control and the treatment villages because if we want to talk about spillover we have to also take into account uh, the proximity of the two uh, groups. Um, thank you. Um, it's a good uh, input. Uh, thank you, Masesa. Uh, I didn't control for that. Um, there's no such information in the data set. 
that there's an uh, there's a information uh, the distance between uh, the house to the nearest ECD center. I think um, I I don't I I haven't uh, I I don't take that into account. And uh, I'll, I'll try uh, whether the results is sensitive if I um, include that uh, uh, variable. Uh, your question about the distance between treatment and control village, uh, uh, it's not, they, they, they are not uh, within one neighborhood. Uh, they are very separate. Um, so uh, it's, it's, it's true that I, I assume the spillover happens uh, within village village okay not across a uh, treatment and control village uh, but uh, based on the uh, initial study the, the field study uh, the, the the document uh, uh, mentioned that uh, it is well well I I I I, I pretty, pretty confident that uh, the spillover effects uh, the, the, the assumption that the spillover effect happened within the village is um, is reasonable because it's they quite separate um, the distance between treatment and control village. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you, Bu Prita. Uh, thank you, Mas Aisa. Thank you, Prita. Uh, if you have, uh, mm -hmm. if. I think there are no participants raising hand and also uh, no more questions left on the chat. Uh, just one quick question, Prita. So who uh, collect the data? Who did the... Survey meter. Survey meter, I think. Yeah, survey meter. Okay. Uh, and this is on... Uh, and we can get the data from the World Bank. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, I, I Actually, a couple months ago, I checked the website. I, I forgot about it. but it's not you, you cannot directly download the data you have to submit the request sure 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 mm -hmm. uh, okay i think this is a, a good venue for us to do exercise yeah uh, with the data because it's public domain all right uh, i think that's all my question if you don't have further question for prita let's give a virtual round of applause for uh, prita for a great presentation Thank you. All right, so next presenter, the second one is uh, Riswandi from the ANU. His presentation is on the long-term impacts of the giant wave, the case of 2004 Indian Ocean Tsunami in child development in Indonesia. Silakan, Pak Riswandi, are you in Canberra? Is it cold over there? <laughs> All right, uh, please, Pak. I'm sorry, you are muted. Uh, unmute dulu, Pak. Belum. Yeah, yeah. Then I yes. Yes, it's, we can yeah. hear you. Yeah. Okay, can you see, can you see the slide? Yes. Uh, yeah. You want to put it in slideshow, Pak? Okay, uh, good morning, everyone, and I think good afternoon from Canberra here. Uh, I'm very happy uh, to be able to present this uh, paper. Um, today, I'll be presenting um, our paper, actually, on long-term impacts of uh, the giant wave, um, the case of the 2004 Indian Ocean Tsunami and Child Development. So this is the um, col collaborative uh, research uh, work with uh, my supervisor, Pak Bodhi uh, Reza Sudarmo, and my colleague uh, from Universitas Yahuala, Pak Saiful Mahdi, and then uh, Ibu Milda Irhamni from KPAL uh, based in Jakarta. Uh, <clears throat> let me start with uh, some uh, backgrounds and uh, motivation why we did uh, this uh, research. Uh, this has been uh, argued that uh, investing in education and health uh, through which uh, human capital accumulated is a key strategy for uh, higher productivity and sustainable development. Uh, 
However, exposure to natural shocks, particularly in childhood, can deteriorate uh, child development. And also, uh, in uh, many developing countries, uh, providing special support uh, among children affected by natural shocks has not been a, a top priority. So, um, identifying the long term effect of natural shock is crucial and uh, to set a relevant policies and implement early mitigation measures. So this topic for Indonesia is very relevant because uh, the country is one of the world's most vulnerable region to natural shocks. Uh, as we uh, can see from uh, 2000 and 2019, during two years, uh, 20 years, Indonesia recorded the world's uh, second highest death toll of the, uh, due to the um, um, uh, natural events uh, like ge ge geophysical, hydrological, and meteorological and climatology disasters. So I think this is a very, uh, very, very um, issue, uh, uh, important topic, and uh, particularly for uh, the government. So back in, uh, what is it? Is it for, uh, can, can you hear me, Bob? Yes, but we can hear you okay. clearly. Okay, okay. I, I, yeah, I don't know why it's. Um... It's okay, but uh, please continue. Yes, I'm not sure why this. Oh, mm. Okay, so in back in 2004, uh, the 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami is uh, recorded as one of the deadliest. Uh, natural uh, events in the world, uh, kill around 220,000 uh, people, um, of which uh, one third is, or children. Uh, in Aceh province uh, itself, um, the death toll is um, around 3.2% of the total population and around uh, almost half a million of people uh, internally displaced and the economic loss um, estimated around 90% of the RHS uh, GDP. So as we can see here from the satellite image um, on the left uh, figure, this is an area uh, of Banda Aceh before the tsunami. And then the figure uh, on, the uh, on the right it, it was the, um, the area uh, after the tsunami. So it is uh, very clear here that the uh, damage uh, level is very massive and the area was uh, totally damaged. Uh, there is a growing uh, body of uh, literature on uh, natural um, shocks and what's the impact of, uh, on children, uh, especially, uh, uh, for instance, like um, famine, uh, flood, uh, extreme uh, temperature, or we uh, weather. But, um, very uh, view uh, literature that uh, focus on uh, tsunamis and it impact on, uh, on child development. Uh, for instance, for Yuko Michi and Isojima um, Ikuya, they investigated the impact of uh, the 2011 uh, Japan tsunami on uh, the MI uh, of preschoolers. And they found that higher prevalence of overweight among preschoolers in affected regions but they cannot find any evidence of underweight, which is one common uh, indicators uh, of health issues in uh, developing countries. Uh, for Indonesia, a uh, few studies have been conducted uh, to investigate the impact of the 2000 uh, tsunami on human capital. Uh, for instance, CAS et al. In 2004, they investigated the impact of parental death on the well being of affected children. Uh, but uh, the parental that might be correlated to uh, parents' uh, pre tsunami characteristic of uh, health uh, condition of the parents. So it would be not uh, established a uh, causal relation. Also, another study conducted by Frank Kenberg in 2007, they investigated the impact of the tsunami on the heart of the children. Uh, but we but there's, that might be the case that uh, selection might be a big problem because uh, of the high mortality. So uh, it could be the case that uh, only children, healthy children uh, survive from the tsunami and then uh, they collected the data. So 
it, it's again uh, may not be established across the regions. So this present study uh, tried to fill the gaps to provide a literature review uh, on new causality evidence on the impact of their natural hazard and their impact in child uh, development. So this study has three uh, main objectives. First, uh, to identify the long-term effect of the 2000 uh, tsunami on educational and health outcomes. Uh, the second one is to investigate the heterogeneity effect by uh, gender and by age group. Uh, we divide it into two uh, groups. Uh, a, um, a younger cohort, uh, which is uh, those who age uh, zero to five when the tsunami happened, and then older cohort, uh, six to 12 uh, years old. And then the last objective is to explore the possible channel uh, to which the uh, tsunami uh, may affect educational and health outcomes, and then uh, the potential uh, consequences on their productivity when they uh, um, in, in their um, uh, adulthood. Uh, the paper uh, also has two uh, contributions. Uh, this paper will be uh, the first study to investigate the impact of natural shocks uh, and child development using uh, spatial regression discontinuity. And then the second uh, contribution is this study is the first study to examine the long-term impact of the uh, tsunami on child development after uh, five years uh, of the event. Uh, because we, we are using a uh, spatial uh, RDE design, uh, this slide just uh, briefly uh, explain what is actually the, uh, the um, uh, spatial uh, RDE design. So RDE design is actually a way of estimating the treatment effects in a non-experimental setting. So where a treatment assignment is a deterministic, whether um, um, uh, a running variable exit uh, a cutoff, and then individual just below the cutoff uh, are good comparison to those just above the cutoff. So therefore, the treatment effects, uh, the treatment assignment is argued to be a, a, as a good as a, a random. So spatial RD is a special case, a special case uh, which uh, recognize a geographic border as a cutoff and then geographic distance as a running variable. Uh, in our identification strategy, first we are looking for uh, an area uh, which has a quite similar um, characteristic in terms of socioeconomic uh, status uh, before a tsunami. And then we employ a spatial RD to estimate uh, the causal effect. Um, by comparing um, those living in uh, part of the uh, area which is uh, heavily affected by tsunami and those living in uh, area uh, in other part of the area which is which, which was uh, uh, mildly affected by the tsunami so uh, in these uh, figures at, as we can see here in the left uh, in left figures here this is uh, the area that might be uh, potentially can use as, um, as um, a setting for our uh, research. Uh, this area is an adjacent area, as you can see here. This is, uh, uh, there is a river here uh, splitting these two area. Uh, when tsunami happened, the river actually, uh, as you can see here on the right uh, figure, as we can see here, the river re actually reduced the strength of the uh, tsunami wave. Uh, as a result, uh, the area on the left of the river was uh, totally uh, heavily damaged compared to the area on the, on the right here, uh, quite mildly um, damaged. So based on this uh, satellite image, we can assess the level of the damage uh, caused by the tsunami. Also, we collect the data from a survey and asking the um, uh, help of uh, head of the household whether their house in 2004 was totally uh, damaged by the tsunami. And almost half of the total um, household head in a heavily affected area uh, was totally damaged, the house, uh, compared to only 6% of the total house in uh, effect, uh, mildly affected area uh, were damaged. So, uh, this our uh, identification strategy. 
Okay, this slide is just to, to illustrate how we measure the spatial proximity under spatial RD because um, geographic borders is very, very uh, uh, crucial in this uh, study. So we, we measure uh, the distance or the proximity uh, from household K here, as, a, as you can see here, to the closest uh, point of the river R RK here. So uh, we use uh, distance as a one dimensional running variable in our study, uh, representing by dk here, uh, which is uh, the closest uh, distance or perpendicular distance. Alternatively, in uh, our study, we use two dimensional running variable, which is a, a k here and dk here. Uh, ek is the difference uh, x coordinate. Uh, and then BK is the Y coordinate difference. So we uh, use uh, these two um, running variable uh, distance as, uh, as our uh, running variable. Once we have a river as the, uh, as the cutoff, then the river will assign the treatment as uh, the treatment. So those living in this area uh, will be assigned as the treated area, uh, which is, uh, um, heavily damaged by the tsunami. And then those living on the right of the river uh, were assigned as the control group. We uh, use a main model uh, as stated in equation one. Uh, we use linear polynomial in distance to the river. Uh, YIK is the educational, uh, the, the uh, outcomes variable, uh, uh, which is uh, educational and health outcomes uh, in household K for individual I. TK is the treatment variable, which is equal to one uh, for household K in the treated area, and then zero for household K in the control area. Uh, DK is the distance of household K centered at the platform. Uh, R, uh, RK is the factor of characteristic of indi individual E, uh, individual I, uh, including uh, marital status, uh, sex, age, uh, birth order, and mother's education. And H, uh, K is a factor of uh, characteristic of household K, uh, such as elevation, distance to coastline, facility, uh, house facility index, number of family variable, whether uh, they have a goal of jewelry and whether they have uh, land in rural or in urban areas. Uh, in addition to the main model, we also use um, alternative forms of uh, spatial RD. Uh, the first we use quadratic polynomial as in equation two, linear polynomial with uh, treatment interaction uh, in equation three, and then the last um, as, uh, Less a form of spatial uh, RD, we use linear polynomial using two dimensional running variable, which is X and Y coordinate differences in equation as stated in equation four. Um, this slide, I would, I would like to emphasize that we find a very uh, good setting uh, uh, area uh, in our survey for a spatial RD application with uh, treated and controlled areas are in, in adjacent location, but they have different impact of the tsunami uh, here. Uh, compared to uh, other uh, surrounding area, uh, for instance, if we move, move a little bit uh, to the north here, in the control area, the, the, the location is uh, mainly used for, uh, uh, mainly used for um, official housing complex or schools and open space and just a little bit uh, uh, area for a community housing was So we are afraid of uh, lack of the observation for control uh, groups. Apologies, uh, Pat, this one, five more minutes, Pat. Okay, so if we move further to the, uh, to the, to the coast, uh, those areas are, are uh, damaged, damaged uh, heavily by the tsunami. So it's not a, a good uh, setting for our risk. Uh, this is a sampling frame uh, for heavily affected village. We use a list of household, uh, which is three weeks uh, developed after this, uh, after the tsunami. We can see here. This is a copy of the of the list. Uh, we have name, uh, age, and status, uh, and then uh, this is remarks uh, saying that whether they uh, still alive or missing or dead, 
So we choose, uh, we pick the target household, which has a, a child or children between age zero to 12, and then select randomly the target household. For the mildly affected village, we use 2010 population census, where, and then we randomly select the household uh, who has uh, uh, children between zero to five age, and then have living in the survey uh, since uh, before the 2004. So this is our, uh, we conduct a household survey in Banda Aceh in three, uh, in, in, in three uh, villages. Um, before we uh, do a household, so we um, conducted the, the household uh, survey, we conduct an enumerated training. And then as we can see here, the rejection rate uh, is quietly uh, low, uh, around 5%. And then uh, um, eventually we have, uh, 439 household, um, and then within uh, 696 target respondents. So this is the summary statistics. Uh, we can uh, go back here if there's any question on this. Uh, before we uh, test the, um, before we uh, test the impact, we first uh, conduct the validity test for two key assumptions under uh, RB which is running variable manipulation and covariate balance test. Uh, this figure uh, confirmed that there is no discontinuity at the cutoff, uh, meaning that um, there is no, uh, there is no uh, manipulation on a running variable. And also <clears throat> table four here, we can see um, most of covariate are statistically insignificant, which suggests respondent in heavily and mildly affected area are uh, have similar uh, characteristics. Uh, this table uh, provides some um, um, effects uh, on educational outcome. We use years of schooling and uh, school le uh, levels continue to uh, high, education, uh, high education. In the estimation, we use three different uh, bandwidth. Uh, H bar is the average than which 169 meters from both from, uh, uh, from the river, 400 meters and 700, uh, 780 meters, which is uh, will, will, will cover all the respondents. As we can see here, ch children in heavily affected uh, area tend to have a 0.5 to 1.3 a few years of schooling and less likely to continue to higher education, around 17% uh, point to 20. Uh, eight percent point uh, in later one. Uh, we also plot the uh, estimate. Uh, we can see here there is uh, an upward uh, discontinuity at the cutoff, uh, which is indicate uh, which indicate that children in heavily affected area tend to have lower educational outcome than those in uh, mildly affected area. One more minute. For physical, yeah, for physical uh, health outcomes, we only find a. Uh, a negative uh, and significant impact uh, for height. It means children in heavily affected area are on average shorter than 1.2 standard deviation than those in uh, mildly affected area. We do robust tests uh, uh, using OLS and alternative form of uh, uh, RB and then non parametric uh, RB and use uh, take, take up ops. And we see uh, or, uh, all of the, 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 the the coefficients are uh, relatively, relatively robust. We uh, we do a sub analysis, uh, uh, sub group analysis by gender and by uh, age group. So we can find fem female children in heavily affected area tend to have a lower educational outcomes. Both female and male children, on average, are shorter. Uh, male children are more likely to be underweight. For age group, older cohort uh, who was born. Uh, who are aged six to 12 years um, at the time of the tsunami tend to have lower educational outcomes and higher uh, prevalence of, uh, of asthma. Okay, uh, we if find, uh, uh, time okay. is up, if you could. Okay, uh, I, think, I think that's, yeah, I think that's, uh, yeah, I think that's all. Uh, yeah, sorry for the, uh, for the time. No, no, if you want to wrap up in like uh, 30 seconds, but. Yeah, so I think this is the, the conclusion of the study. So the tsunami caused a few years of schooling, less likely to continue to higher education and shorter height among children uh, highly affected uh, upon their adulthood. And then cognitive distortion could be a potential channel 
And then lower income during uh, their adulthood can be a potential consequences on the impact of the tsunami. And then this is just a, a recommendation. Um, provision of uh, nutrition is, is, is very essential during uh, after the, the, the disaster. I think that's, that's, that's all good, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Very interesting, but uh, Reswandi. Uh, yeah. I wonder if we can also do this uh, later after the crisis, I mean, the pandemic. Yeah. So I think we will see this in the next uh, few years. Yeah. Okay, I'll invite, uh, I will invite uh, questions from the participants. Please raise your hand, or you can also uh, write down your questions in the chat. Silahkan, Bapak dan Ibu. I don't see anyone. Oh, sorry. Uh, Juventus. Please, Pak Juventus. Uh, please unmute yourself. Yeah. Uh, hi, Pak Riswandi. Thank you for interesting presentation. I just have one question. Uh, after the tsunami in Aceh, there's a lot of uh, aid, including foreign aid and government aid. I just wonder whether you included that in your model. Thanks. Yeah. So un unfortunately, we do not have um, we do not control this um, data uh, on international aid. Um, if it is available, it will be great if we can insert it in the model. Um, but it's a very a good um, input. Um, and comment, and I'll consider uh, whether there is a uh, how much international aid has been allocated to control group and treated group. But unfortunately, and up to now, uh, we don't have the data. Thank you, Master Ve. This is my uh, he's he's my neighbors actually in a uh, Crawford school. All right, so both of you are in a uh, very cold. Uh, winter Canberra right now, yeah? <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Okay, thank you, Pak Juventus. Uh, we have a questions written here in the chat. Pa, uh, again, Pak Albertus Gilikalo from uh, UNIPA. Good presentation, Pak Riswandi. As we know that since the tsunami, many education programs have been carried out in Aceh, especially those affected uh, treated area. So that educational outcomes will be biased. How is this issue addressed in the model? Thank you. Silakan Pak Riz, Wandi. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Pak uh, Albertus. This is very great questions. Um, well, we argue before the tsunami, yeah. uh, the socioeconomics um, are quite um, homogeneous. Um, after the tsunami, uh, a lot of programs, uh, uh, especially funded by international agency, already implemented in both uh, in both uh, areas, in in treated and the control areas, because they are in the in the same um, munis municipality, and then those program coming to the to the municipality will also. Uh, implemented in a control group, so not only in the in the in the in the treated group, but uh, international program also uh, conducted uh, delivered in a in a treated group. So uh, the outcomes, the estimate uh, coefficient might not be biased because uh, in this study we use we compare only those living very close. The only uh, impact is because they are separated uh, in different, uh, separated by a uh, river, which is uh, very crucial in reduce uh, the indifferentiated the impact of the tsunami. So um, we argue because of this impact, this event, uh, there will be uh, uh, there will be a different in 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 outcomes. So I think. Uh, uh, educational outcome might not be biased due to the program, uh, the educa educational program delivered by uh, uh, local government, central government, or 
given by international government. Thank you, Pa Albertus. Okay, thank you, Pa Swandi. We have one final question from uh, Prita. Silakan, Prita. Uh, very good presentation, Pa. Um, I have a question. Uh, uh, <coughs> I have a couple, but I, I, I'll, I'll raise one. Uh, is uh, you, uh, I see that uh, you use the river uh, mm. at the cutoff. Uh, uh, do you consider um, like a fuzzy regression discontinuity? Like maybe uh, the cutoff is not exactly uh, on the river, but like maybe 100 meters uh, yeah. distance from the river. Yeah, we use a sharp RD actually here. We do not use fuzzy, but we um, conduct, we perform a robustness test using uh, fake cutoff. So we hypothetically shift the river to the right or to the left 100 meters and then further along to 200 meters, 300 meters, and etc. Uh, we find the effect is still robust. But uh, uh, I cannot go through the presentation at that time because of time limitation, but we do um, a robustness check using a fake cough, a fake, fake cut cough, um, uh, shifting the, the, the river to the left and to the right from the original one, from the original river. Thank you, Rita. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Rita. Um, uh -huh, yeah. Uh, maybe uh, one. You, you have okay. one quick question. You have one question, Rita. Uh, yeah. I just, I just want to ask. Uh, do you use the baseline variable? Yes. Uh, we do have a uh, baseline in in covariate balance. We do uh, many. Um, baseline variable. We collected during the survey. We asked them, uh, like, what the yeah, what the um, source of water in two thousand four, just before the tsunami, and then we asked um, uh, another question: uh, uh, main source of electricity, uh, whether they have toilet or not in two thousand four, before just before the the, 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 the tsunami. In addition to that, we also collect a secondary data from um, Semeru and Podes 2003 to compare the socioeconomic status. And there is no uh, big difference between the two uh, uh, areas uh, in terms of uh, um, educational services, uh, uh, health um, services, and poverty rate. So we do uh, balance this and have a baseline variable. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Look like a robust uh, results. Yes, they are, uh, they're robust. Okay. okay, thank you, Pita. Terima kasih, Pak Ariswandi. Let's give a round virtual applause for Pak Ariswandi and best of luck. Thank for you your, very uh, much, everyone. Research. All right, uh, now uh, we just uh, time wise, let's move to the final uh, speaker. Uh, Esa Azali Asyahid dari UGM and his presentation is Is mobile phone bad for kids? Evidence from the Indonesian Family Life Survey. I think this is quite relevant with, for my kids, yeah? We use a lot of mobile phone. Okay, please, Mas Esa. Okay, uh, you see my... Yes. Yes, we can see it. If you can do a slideshow, Mas. Sorry. Um, okay. Is it in slideshow now? Yes. Okay, thank you. So, um, good morning all. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to share my... Um, my study here so this is actually a personal project so i do it in my spare time and this is a very uh, preliminary result and i need a lot of input uh, from you 
So the title of my study is uh, is mobile phone bad for kids uh, evidence from Indonesian uh, family life survey. So a bit about uh, the motivation about this study. So we know that currently uh, the gadget, the digital technology, especially mobile phone, has been uh, used wide, uh, in a widespread manner by the kids, even in uh, lower socioeconomic groups, because it's now a very affordable. And um, this event has uh, sparked a common fear about the impact of the utilization of mobile phone to the development of children's psychosocial and, and cognitive function. A bit about figure. So as early as 2012, 65% uh, of children aged 8 to 18 years old from several countries uh, were reported to use a mobile phone. So this is almost a decade ago then uh, the children, uh, the majority of children have already uh, owned and also use mobile phone. And about the, the opinions from the parents, we see that a uh, majority of the parents uh, feel that, that mobile phone has bad influence, but then a significant portion of them also says that it has a good influence. So we have a diverging opinion from the parents. From the theoretical perspective, um, some studies have uh, tried to explain how is the correlation between mobile phone use or also digital technology in general and the outcomes uh, of uh, that usage. Uh, at least some um, mobile phone can negatively affect cognitive function through three channels, theoretically. One is by limiting uh, and depriving attentional capacity, and also by weakening memory and knowledge acquisition, and also by creating addiction. So, uh, but on the other hand, um, we also know that mobile phone also uh, could have a positive impact because it can facilitate information searching if it's uh, used in the correct manner, of course. What about the empirics? So the, the empirics about the relationship between mobile phone use and cognitive function, um, especially among young adults, uh, mostly college students are quite abundant. But then uh, the studies focus on the younger age group, the children are sparser. Uh, this is one example. And for now, there is still no agreement on the negative effect of uh, the use of mobile phone because uh, there is still different findings on this topic. Some support strong negative effect, while the others uh, support little, uh, little or even no effect. But then the problem is that most of the studies uh, provide no measures to establish causality. And also a lot of them uh, use only small sample size. Uh, the ex exceptions uh, are from Dempsey et al, Felisoni and Godoy, Belan and Murphy, and also Bert, which uh, utilize a strategy to deal with the, the um, endogeneity problem. And also uh, among these studies, uh, only the second that took place in developing country and it used the sample size of college students. So because of this re uh, research gap, uh, this study tries to fill the, the gap on this topic about the impact of mobile phone adoption and also use on cognitive ab ability in the context of developing country, uh, Indonesia with focus on children. So the data that I utilized is uh, from Indonesia Family Life Survey. The sample is uh, the children under 15 years old in school age. Uh, so there are two questions related to mobile phone. The, uh, the, uh, the first is whether the child owns mobile phone or not. And then if uh, they own it, 
uh, they'll be asked about the the use of that mobile phone, whether is it for private conversation, business conversation, etc. And then for the outcomes for the cognitive ability, I use the cognitive test from the book EK of IFLS. So we have um, two kind of tests. The first is uh, reference progressive matrices uh, to measure uh, general intelligence. This is a kind of test that is uh, being used <coughs> in IQ tests. And the second is um, arithmetic test. So uh, for the cognitive ability uh, to answer that it is in interval scale instead of ordinal scale, uh, I didn't use a uh, raw score, but instead I computed um, predicted latent ability. So, so I utilized uh, item response theory or specifically RAS model to estimate uh, what is the, the, the latent ability of the kid. So this is the, the model. So from this equation, uh, basically I estimate the theta Theta is the predicted um, latent ability. Uh, I also uh, use uh, other variables as controls. Uh, one is uh, the set of child characteristics, uh, which are age, gender, and also years of schooling. Uh, I'm also paid for age uh, to measure the physical um, quality. And also, I also control for household and parents' characteristics, which is the household size, uh, expenditure, and um, parental uh, years of schooling, uh, and also uh, whether the other members of household has mobile phone or not, and also the average uh, value of the general intelligence and also arithmetic ability of the other uh, household member, excluding the child. The child. Um, the second data source is from PODES. So in PODES, we have information about the strength of mobile phone signal in each village, which is recorded in three categories, uh, no signal at all, weak signal, and strong signal. So I use this um, information to instrument the ownership and also the use of mobile phone by the children. But because the in the IFLS, uh, the lowest level of um, common identifier is only in kecamatan level. So we only know, uh, we only able to identify uh, kecamatan, but not village. So then I aggregate the for this data into kecamatan level and then link it to the, the IFLS data. So this is the empirical, empirical strategy. So yeah, we know that, so, so this is the model. Um, we have uh, cognitive ability affected by mobile, mobile phone ownership and also use, and also we, we have covariates which are unobserved and also observed, which both affect uh, mobile phone use and ownership and also cognitive ability. So that if we not included all of these covariates, we will get um, biased data here. And this is uh, just the explanation of the, the IV technique. Uh, I think uh, you have uh, familiar with uh, the assumptions for the instrument, which are instrument exogeneity and relevance. And, and this is uh, the first stage um, equation of my um, model. So I instrument the phone, mobile phone use and ownership of the children in sub district J using the aggregate measure of signal strength from that sub district. And then the, the question is that does uh, signal strength 
at sub-district level serve as good instrument. So the first assumption is about relevance. Uh, I, I argue that signal strength is correlated with children mobile phone ownership because first in areas with lack of signal, there is no necessity to have mobile phone. And then the stronger the signal, I think the more likely the people, uh, including the children to have and use mobile phone. And what about exogenity? Do signal strength affect children's cognitive ability only through uh, mobile phone ownership or use? Um, yeah, um, I, I acknowledge that there is a possibility that mobile phone signal affects the development of that area, the village or sub-district, and then affects um, children through the increase in socioeconomic characteristics of the family. So uh, by acknowledging this, I also control for household characteristics to minimize the causal channel through omitted variable that will um, violate um, exogenity assumption. So here is a bit of the descriptive statistic of the covariate. So we can see that more than 30% of the children has mobile phone. Uh, quite a lot, uh, remembering that this is from 2014, 2015, so about five years ago. And about the ownership of mobile phone by the other household member, so we have more than 90% uh, of the, the children whose uh, other other household member also has mobile phone. What about the use of the mobile phone by children? So, four top reason or four top um, type of utilization of the mobile phone is first is for private conversation and then for text message. Uh, we have to remember that this is uh, two thousand fourteen. Um, when a uh, smartphone is not uh, yet um, popular. So I think a lot of um, mobile phone is still uh, the regular mobile phone. And the fourth um, top usage is for entertain entertainment and multimedia, including playing games, uh, watching videos, etc. And the fourth is uh, for social media. And this is the, the baseline result of the regression. So I, I just use uh, OLS regression here. We can see that uh, in column one and four, uh, when I uh, not uh, control anything uh, than the ownership of mobile phone, we can see positive uh, effect of mobile phone ownership uh, for general intelligence measure, those who have a mobile phone uh, have um, general intelligence measure uh, about a health standard deviation higher than those who don't have mobile phone. And for arithmetic ability, the, the gap is slightly lower. But then I, after I include the controls, the children's characteristics and also the household characteristics and also parental characteristics, the magnitudes become smaller and smaller, even though it's still positive. So we know that here we have a positive bias due to selection because, of course, children who, who have a um, mobile phone um, are most probably <coughs> those from a uh, family with um, a higher socioeconomic background. So after controlling this, the effect becomes smaller and smaller. Sorry, Mas, Esa, you have five yeah. more minutes. Okay, thank you. So uh, if we look at the, the, the utilization of the mobile phone, uh, you, this is using uh, a full set of controls. The, correlation is still positive. But again, we know that this is uh, still have, a, I think, positive bias. And then I added um, household fixed effects. 
to control for the unobserved uh, variables in household level. And by controlling this, uh, I also um, indirectly controlling for other unobserved in the higher level, in village, sub-district level, etc. Now, after uh, including household fixed effects, the, the coefficient becomes um, significantly significant, uh, statistically indifference from zero. So um, in this uh, household fixed effect result, um, I argue that this is already actual to the causal effect because we have um, clear uh, most of the unobserved and we left with um, child's characteristic, which is unobserved. And from the literature, we know that they are mainly about um, like psychological trait, like motivation, effectiveness in regulating focus and attention, etc. But then I, I argue that these traits, these psychological traits, are correlated negatively with mobile phone ownership, but positively with cognitive outcomes. So um, those creating a negative bias in our coefficient of interest. Therefore, the zero effect found in this regression, in the, the fixed effect regression, can be considered as, um, I think, lower bound estimates for the effect. Because again, the, the, the main thing, the main unobserved variables is um, psychological trait that correlates positively with um, cognitive outcomes, but then negatively with uh, mobile phone ownership or use. And for the um, IV regression, so about the instrument um, relevance, um, I only select um, model in which the 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 mo the signal strength in the sub district level have um, f statistic above ten. So this is uh, we know that this is the rule of thumb of um, selecting uh, quite a strong instrument. So I only use um, the regressor uh, the regressor of um, ownership of mobile phone and also the use of mobile phone for entertainment and multimedia because their F uh, statistics are above 10. This is after controlling for other covariates. And this is the, the result from the IV regression. Um, Sorry, Master, you have one more yeah. minute. Okay, thank you. If we only look at the, the sign, so the sign on the outcome of general intelligence, we have positive effect, but then for arithmetic ability, we have negative effect. I think uh, this is quite um, reasonable since um, general intelligence is measured by a pattern recognition task. And by operating a mobile phone regularly, regularly especially for pattern intensive tasks like Playing game, uh, it probably can train children to recognize patterns better, uh, hence higher reference test result. But then, for the arithmetic test, uh, it demands more specific and thought skill that can uh, only um, learned in school. Hence, uh, we have uh, negative uh, effect. But then, uh, we also know that the the significance is. Uh, gone, and then we we also see the explosion in the the magnitude of the coefficient. So I think um, I still have a problem with um, the instrument. Perhaps um, the instrument is not that strong enough. So yeah, um, um, this IV regression is still uh, very preliminary. So to con to conclude, um, the baseline regression result uh, shows that. We have a positive correlation between mobile phone ownership or use and cognitive measures among school age children. But then after controlling for household fixed effect, the positive correlation uh, goes away. This is probably due to selection bias. 
and um, the preliminary result from IV estimations um, uh, don't find any any uh, significant effect of the mobile phone ownership or use to the cognitive measures. Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Mas uh, Esa. Uh, so it's not that bad, yeah, mobile phone use. So from your research. Uh, because it's 2014, 2015, where, you know, the use of mobile phone and smartphone has not been so, you know, that massive like now. Yeah. Uh, maybe <laughs> just one idea, you know, you know that in villages we have Warnet and rental game, you know, yeah. or perhaps if you can control that, that would be great. But I don't think there is a data on that. Okay, uh, I would like to invite um, uh, our uh, questions from participants. Please raise your hand, or you can also uh, write down your questions on the chat. Silahkan. Any? Uh, from Tangerang City, uh, Astrid, Bu Astrid, silahkan. Uh, please unmute, Bu. Thank you, uh, Mas Esa. That's a good presentation. Uh, I would like to ask how you measure the high for age uh, Z score. Uh, as far as I know, that the Z score, uh, if you uh, measure uh, by Z score, then you need to know uh, the whole population of children in that area. Is, uh, did you do that or just uh, measure the high for age only? Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you for the question, uh, Ibu Astrid. So, yes, so for the hate for age, I am using the distribution for the whole from the whole population. So, in Stata, we have a um, package called, um, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's called ZZ Anthro or kind of that. So, uh, basically, we use uh, this, the distribution of uh, Paid for H from WHO. So we yeah use uh, distribution from the entire population from WH, uh, WHO data, not only from uh, my sample. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Bu Astrid, Mas Esa. Uh, I'm going to read a question again from Albertus Greg Allo from Unipa. Uh, good presentation, Mas Esa. Nice to meet you again. Uh, in my opinion, if you use an arithmetic mean to create signal in sub-district level, an area with a poor signal will be attracted to an area with a good signal. Might need to try using mode or other potential IV in PODES. That is keberadaan based transceiver station uh, or BTS atau menara telepon seluler. Thank you. This Mas Esa, you want to respond? Okay, uh, Pak Albert, nice to meet you again here. Um, so yes, um, for the BTS, not the BTS, uh, the boy band, right? <laughs> this is base transfer station. I've tried to use it, but um, the the correlation with the mobile phone use is weaker than if I use the signal strength. So that's why I use um, BTS. Uh, sorry, um, signal strength instead of BTS. And regarding the the aggregation method, um, yes, I I've uh, only tried uh, using uh, min so far. So uh, thank you for the input. Probably next time I can try to use um, um, what is it um, mode or yeah perhaps median or other aggregation technique and then compare them. Thank you for the input, uh, Pa Albert. Okay. Uh, is there any more question from the participant? Uh, thank you, Mas Esa. Good job from Pa Albert. Thank you, Pa Albert. All right. Uh, if Hang on, Mas. Uh, I don't see anyone raising his hand, uh, their hands anymore, and no more questions on the chat. Uh, 
maybe just briefly i i have a burning question mas esa uh okay. do you in your uh data distribution of the kids so those who are using mobile phone are they concentrated in urban areas and whether they are concentrated in um like higher socioeconomic uh, uh status group so i wonder if that's uh, actually also affecting the result okay uh thank you for the question Bururi. um to be honest so i've not um uh calculated the the ratio of the mobile phone ownership and use for the sub samples yet but um regarding the socioeconomic status i think um as far as i remember there is not much difference um between um those from from higher socioeconomic status uh, compared to those uh, from lower economic status um probably uh it has something to do with the time uh, type of the mobile phone i think but yeah we cannot capture the type of uh, mobile phone here whether they are a regular phone or smartphone and yes um this is uh, i think uh, for the next step i can look at the 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 sub samples to compare between the subgroups uh, thank you for uh, the input gururi uh, thank you for uh, such a fascinating uh, research, Mas. Uh, yeah, uh, I think, you know, the use of smartphone right now is quite debatable, yeah, especially for parents like me with, you mm -hmm. know, with Anna SD. We use a lot of mobile phone today. All right. So if you have no further questions, uh, participants, I would like to thank uh, Mas Esa and give round of applause to Mas Esa. And also round of applause for all presenters today who have delivered their uh, research, you know, exciting research very uh, greatly. Uh, without further ado, I think uh, let's wrap up this session. Terima kasih banyak ibu dan bapak yang telah mengikuti sesi ini dengan uh, antusias dan aktif. Uh, sampai bertemu lagi di sesi-sesi yang lain.